Hi, in this video we will talk about how to use SQL using the SQL DF package in R. And with that package we can use select, insert, update and delete commands on our records. So let's get started with the package. So first of all I would need the library uh, or the package SQL DF. If you don't have it you can install it using packages. And the data which I'll be using is the built-in data set called Iris. And you can see the data. Notice there is a dot in cpl.length and cpl.width. The most easiest command for selecting the data is this. So we are saying that using SQLDF, select star from Iris. And then we are copying this into a data frame called DF. And if I run this, we get a new data frame, which is exactly the same as Iris because we told, told it to copy everything into DF. And if you can look at it, you can see it has exactly the same structure as well. Or you can look at it here as well. Now, you can also pick selective data from the iris data set if i just wanted cpal.width uh, and the species from uh, this table we can do that notice that i've actually put a square bracket in there because if you notice the name of the the the, the uh, column is cpal.length or cpal.width if i just use that and let me run it and show you what happens it gives an error saying no such column cpal.width so if you ever have a situation like this, just put a square bracket around that. And if I run it now, it'll work properly. So now my DF has only two columns, sepal width, because we said we want to select it as sepal width. So in, in the data set which we get, the name has been changed. So there's no dot in there. So that's how you can um, do that. And if you just wanted the top two records in this, you can do that as well. So I just wanted to pick only two records. So it has given us the, 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 the first two records in this one. And if you wanted to order it or arrange it in a particular order, for example, in this one, I'm saying I want these two fields and then I want to order it by the CPL width. So if I look at my data now, it's um, ordered by the CPL width, so in an ascending order. So highest being at the at the bottom, sm uh, smallest uh, being at the top. And you can obviously change it to a descending order by putting this at the end. So saying order by CPL in a descending order. So this is basically an ascending order, which is denoted by ASC, but th that's default, so you don't really have to give it. Now, if I run this with a descending, you would notice that the highest sepal width is at the top and the smallest one is at the bottom. Now, you can also perform some other functions with, with SQLDF. For example, if I wanted the maximum sepal width, so I'm saying that I want to get the max of the cpal.width and then I want to copy it as, uh, or I want to put it into a field which I'm naming it as max cpal width. So if I run this, you would notice that there's only one observation of one record in there. It has given us the maximum value um, of, of that, of the max cpal width. Now, let me show you another thing. For example, if you wanted to get the sum of of, um, of the sepal width by, by each species, you can do that as well. So notice that I'm saying sum of the sepal width, and I'm saying as sum some sepal width, and I want the species as well, and then I want to grip it by species. So for each species, I should be getting. Um, a row in there so this is the sum for each of the species you can 
if you wanted you could go one step further and you could have told it to do like this you can say get me them minimum sepal width as min sepal width as well and then you would see that it has given us the minimum sepal widths for each of these species and similarly you could actually go max in that as well and this, this has picked up the maximum sepal width which is available in in those species so having said that um, let's go one step further and how about doing a calculation of the mean or the average you can do that as well so all you have to do is say avg for that uh, field and then I'm, I'm naming it as mean sepal width and if i run it it's going to give us an average for each species so for each species we have the, the, the mean or the average of each species similarly you can calculate the variance as well so in this case we have the variance for each of those um, sepal widths for each of the species now let, let's see how we can do the insertion of data in the in the in the data set so let me create a simple data set it'll be a bit easier to explain and it'll be a bit easier to understand it also so if i create a small data frame which is nothing but two columns so first column is called a the second column is called b and i have three rows of, of data in there so if i wanted to insert the data so this is the simple um, sql command which you would have given in, in in any sql system to insert the data but if i run this you get into an error so nothing happens so the way it works is that you have to first issue a sql command then you would select the same data so you can select star from d so in the first instance you're actually saying i want to insert a record and in the second instance you're saying select the data from this table or in, from this data frame or data set and then i'm going to put a c around that so combining it together combining both these commands into a single thing and that's it and if i run this i'm going to select the data and put it into d again so if i run this command and if i look at the d again i have four records now x has been inserted with a value of 999 using this command so just notice or remember this that you have to combine it this is the first command which actually inserts the data the second command is a command which actually selects that same data and then you're combining it together and then running the sql df now the same thing can be done for updating of the data so if i wanted to update the data I can do exactly the same thing so let me repeat the same data again so we have the data which has three um, rows like before and now i'm going to issue exactly the same command using the same syntax or the first um, command is actually saying i want to update my data frame d and I want to set the value of A as YYY and I want to set the value of B as 111. Numeric doesn't have to be under single quotes. If it's a character value, you just put it under um, a single quotes on both sides. Where A equals A. You're telling otherwise, if you don't give this, it's going to uh, update all the records with yyy and 111 
but we want to do it selectively. So we are saying in whatever row we have a equals a, which is basically this row, we want to upgrade this to y, 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 and then p equals 1, 1, 1. Let's do that and see what happens. So the first row, which was a there, has been changed to y, 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 and this value has been changed to 1, 1, 1 which is for this. And now let me remove this and you would appreciate what happens now. You would notice that each and every record has been copied. So it's, it's um, a tricky situation if you don't give a select a selective um, update command or basically telling it what records we need to update based on the criteria which is this. Now lastly, how do you delete a data from from D so, or, or, or data frame? So we have this data frame at the moment. Um, let's see how we can delete it. Exactly the same thing, except the fact that we are saying delete from D, where A equals Y, 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 and then we are picking the data again. So we hope to see this first row gone after I run this command. So yes, the first row has been gone because the condition was, or the criteria was A equals Y, 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 which was the first row and that has been deleted. So basically this is how you do select, insert, update and delete um, of records in SQLDF. Um, and go to use the library or the package called SQLDF. I hope you found this information useful. Thank you very much for watching it and I'll see you in the next one.